All right, we're continuing on this calculator program version one that doesn't have any prompts, so let's jump right into it. So to recall where we were at in the previous video, we've got the initial implementation of this version one, and I'm assuming you've watched the previous video and have your code uh, up to this point. We had left it where we had this startup function and I had left a to-do to display the start time. Um, and the idea here was to give us some review of one of the functions we've looked at previously. So to display the start time, we need to have a time. So I'll say include time.h, which has, gives us access to time. So if we're going to display the start time, what we can do is first we need to get the current time and from a previous video we know that when you're working with time you have a data type that is you have a box that's of type time underscore t now remember we've we've had boxes that are integers and boxes that are doubles and at least on one video we had a box that was a time a t I'm going to call this variable start underscore time so that will be the start time. We need this variable, this box, doesn't have anything in it. It's just some random bits right now. So to fill it, we'll have start time equals call the time function and pass into it. Notice it says it accepts a pointer to a time type. And again, I realize I'll, this is always a little unclear. But for right now, just type capital N-U-L-L, -L, which is null. That basically says ignore that input and just return to us the current start time when we're running this. So that gets the actual time and we could we could print it out. Let's actually do this. Let's say printf. Maybe we'll say start underscore time is percent. Hmm, what is this? It turns out it's called a long unsigned backslash n. And that this is another one. I realize it's a little unclear. Long, meaning it's a bigger box. And U for unsigned, meaning there's no such thing as a negative number. But we will say print that value right there. And in fact, when I click on run and run this, notice we see the start time is this, right, this value here. It's just some, some number that the computer keeps. In fact, every time I click on it, you see that number increments. And it might be better to show it in human terms. And again, this was to help us review from the previous video in lesson two where we talked about time. We could have a character pointer, which is pointing to a, a bunch of characters. And I'll call this uh, start time. I think I'll call it str for string. So we would like to take this number and convert it into a string. And how we can do that is say the start underscore time str equals to, well, how can we convert start time into a string? And there's a function we call c time. So c time, notice it says, give us a pointer to where you have a time type. Now I'm going to purposely do this incorrectly the first time because I've this is an error I see a lot. It's, it's warning us, right? It's saying, hey, you've got an incompatible type. But, but let me just temporarily ignore that. Click on Run. Boom. Not only do, do we get the warning at line 16, but we actually crash segmentation fault. So we said in earlier videos, when you get segmentation fault, core dumped, the core is your memory. It means you crashed, and it, it saved your memory when you crashed. So, again, if we had looked at the warning, incompatible integer to pointer conversion. So it's saying we're basically trying to pass in the box, but it doesn't want the box. It wants a pointer to the box. So we want to give that pointer. And notice when we do that and we click on Run, we get the start time uh, converted, right? We didn't crash. And then to print it out, we could say printf percent s backslash n 
start time string. So notice the percent %s says uh, you're going to put a string here, and the string is coming from this variable, which was initialized by calling this. So now when we run it, aha, we see we're getting uh, a, a, a value there we expect. In fact, looking at this, looks like we've got an extra new line. I could probably remove this new line here and click on Run. And notice that took care of that extra new line. Now remember, you can pause the video. You can replay it. Absolutely, positively make sure as I type in this code, you're typing it in as well and you understand it. So if you have to watch it multiple times or run it multiple times, please do so. Okay, since we're talking about functions, this sum, instead of us not doing anything, let's actually do what the sum operation should do. It should say return num1 plus num2. Pretty simple, actually. But the key here is not so much how you add two numbers, but rather we're doing it inside a function. In fact, let's have another function we'll call, um, call sub. And again, we'll pass two numbers into it, integer 1. And, uh, and remember, a function, you give the name, you give the inputs. So here we have two inputs, num1 and num2. We have the beginning and ending of the function, and we have the name, and it's going to return an integer. So here we will return num1 minus num2. Again, no big deal. You know how to subtract two numbers. But we're putting our functions here, so let's have another one. This one we'll say is our malt, and we'll say uh, integer num1, integer num2. And then in this case, we'll say return num1 times num2. That falls out pretty good. Let's do a next one. Integer, how about divide? We'll have integer num1, integer num2. By the way, you could call these anything you want to. I just happen to be calling them num1, num2. I'll, I'll just for example, I could call this uh, about A and B. These are just the names you refer them refer to them by. They can be anything, but that's how we can access, in this case, A divided by B. All right, so we've got that. Now remember, as you're typing in your code, I encourage you to do a run every now and then just to make sure you haven't typed any errors. For example, if I left my semicolon off, right, I would catch it right away, have the little arrow pointing to it. And of course, also with this environment, it shows you with the little red underline. Now, I've got one more. We said we also wanted to have a function to do the remainder. So integer, I'll just call it uh, remainder. And for this one, integer a and integer b. And this one, you might pause money. It's like, wait a minute, what do you mean remainder? Well, when you divide, when you do integer division, when you're dividing integers, it does not keep the what follows the decimal place, which you could look at that as your remainder. So it may be when you do the divide, you want to know what is the remainder from the division. So you can do this operator, which you've never seen before, the percent sign. This percent, percent, I'll say, says to return the remainder. In other words, it's going to divide, it'll be A divided by B, but what it will return is what remains. And in fact, when we run a demo of this, you'll, you'll see it better. So this is kind of the, the new part. When you do integer division, you can divide and see the integer result, or you can divide and see the remainder. All right, so we've got the, let's see, incompatible declaration of library. Oh, so there's a library. Okay, this is another good one. Notice incompatible redeclaration of library function called remainder. So to not interfere with it, let's just call it rem. We'll do it like that, remainder. And again, I click on Run just to make sure all is good. Okay, so we've got us some functions defined. And we'll come down here in our main uh, get num1 and num2. So we'll say 
let's have an integer num1. Maybe we'll just call this number one just to be different. And an integer number two. And maybe just uh, we'll say number one is going to be equal to how about uh, 10. And number two is going to be equal to three. All right. I get the operation. So I'll say to do. We'll worry about getting the operation uh, later on. Right now, just for test purposes, I kind of like to see the result of each one of these. So I'm going to say, instead of hard coding this, okay, so here we did, this was hard coded. Now we're going to say instead, result equals, let's take the sum of number one. So here we've got um, number one and number two. So what this says is get the contents of this box, right? Put it there and put it there. So we'll have basically a 10 and a 3. And then we to prove this works, let's do a printf. We'll say sum result. Well, we'll just say sum percent d backslash n of result. So right, we'll just do that. And again, remember the rule. Just type a little code, run it. And we see, yep, 10 and 3, we added them. We got, got um, 13. Let's do the same thing with the, with the sub. So we'll say result equals sub of, again, number 1 and number 2. If I can type here, number 1 and number 2. And again, we'll just print our result. So notice I grab it, I paste here. This time, of course, this will be the sub. And again, once I type it in, go ahead and run it, see if it's what I'm expecting. So we got seven, right? So 10 minus three, we got seven. How about the multiply? In fact, what I could do is just grab this, copy and paste it right under the, the mult comment and say, well, this is going to be, instead of sub, this is going to be malt. And then this is going to be malt for multiply. So let's run it. All right, so we got our malt of 30, right? So 10 times 3. And then, then we'll do the same thing with the, the division. So come here and put our division right here. And again, change this to div, change this to div, and let's run it. Now check this out. Notice when we did a divide, we got 3. Now let's think about that. We had 10, right? Our number was 10, and we divided by 3. Well, 3 will go into 10 three times. So that's what it showed us, three times. But we know that it goes into 10 three times, but there's one left over. And so if we wanted to find out what was the remainder, we could do this operation. We could say, all right, let's do, instead of div, let's do rem for remainder. And we'll run this. And notice that, indeed, our remainder is one. So I would say this is a, a good place to stop for our version one. And once you've got it running and fully understand this video, you will have made it to another milestone. And there'll be more to come in the next video. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.